code and five? Who wants to do code and five? Five minutes for code? Oh, hell, bring it, boy, code and five. What up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Code and Five. My name is Paul Abernathy, your host, as always, and welcome to the podcast. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about bonding, enclosures, boxes, maybe even transformer cases. When you're dealing with volts to ground of over 250 volts, so over 250 volts to ground applications, you're going to have to do some enhanced bonding requirements, okay? And so we're going to pretty much treat it like a service. So the reason I bring up this question is because people ask me all the time with a transformer, are we required to have a bonding bushing with a bonding jumper um, as the primary comes in and, of course, as the secondary leaves on those types of wiring methods? And the answer to that is... It's all dependent on your condition, whether or not you're dealing with over 250 volts to ground or if you've got concentric or eccentric knockouts or some type of impairment. That's going to play a key role in this application. So first things first, let's set the tone. I have a transformer. It's a 480 volt delta primary, and it's changing it over to a 208Y120 secondary. Okay, that's the stage. So on the primary side, obviously to ground, we exceed 250 volts. In fact, in a delta primary at 480 volts, that would be 480 volts to ground. So in the 250.97, it says, look, if that's what you're dealing with, then you're going to have to do some more enhanced bonding methods. In fact, you're going to act like it's a service and you're going to follow the rules in 250.92B, okay, except for B1, which is a direct connection to the ground and conductor, which you're not going to do on the load side of a service disconnect. Okay, so we're not talking about utility transformers here. We're talking about transformers that are being supplied from the service as so it'd be a feeder downstream. So in this case, if that transformer, the side that is over 250 volts to ground, then we're going to have to do some insured bonding. Now, what if we have a situation where there isn't any KOs, there isn't any concentric or eccentric or oversized plugs? None of that's encountered. Well, if that's the case, then I don't have to worry about anything in 250.92B because I am dealing with a feeder after all. I can go down to the exception. And the exception says, look, I can use a listed fitting. So as long as that wiring method has a listed fitting with it and it makes metal-to-metal contact, in fact, item number three says that I can use fittings with shoulders which seat firmly against the side of the cabinet for things like EMT, for FMC, Uh, other types of cable connectors, as long as I'm making that metal-to-metal contact and I can use a standard lock nut on the inside of that to provide both the mechanical and the the helping ensure that metal-to-metal contact stays in place, I can't do those things at services. I can't use standard lock nuts. But here, since I'm not encountering any oversized concentric or eccentric KOs, in other words, I punched my hole exactly what I needed, if that's the case, then I'm able to make that bond between the wiring method and the enclosure just like I would on a normal 250 volts or less application, which you do every day of the week with a normal EMT with a fitting to a metal box. Okay, you don't put any bonding jumpers on that. Okay, so that's done all the time for feeders and brand circuit applications. So here I can do that same thing, even if it was over 250 volts to ground, as long as I didn't encounter any impairment. Now, if I encountered impairments like concentric or eccentric, then I have to go over to 250.92B and follow those rules and treat it just like I would if it was a service and I encountered those impairments, okay? Pretty simple stuff. Now, there's also boxes and enclosures that the KOs are actually listed for over 250 volts to ground applications. So if that's the case, I don't need any bonding jumpers for those either. Okay, because they're rated for that application. So it's important that you look at 250.97 and understand this exception. Because if you do have impairments, then you're going to need to jump over and follow the rules in 250.92B. If you have a punched hole, and it doesn't matter in a transformer, primary to secondary, if my voltage to ground is 250 volts or less, then I don't need any bonding bushings with bonding jumpers as long as I list a listed fitting and I have metal-to-metal connection. Secondary and primary same way. Now, if I'm over 250 volts to ground, I have to follow the rules in 250.92B if I have some type of impairment. But like with a transformer, we usually punch the hole. Then I can jump down to the exception and it says I can use a listed fitting and use a listed wiring method. And I'm good to go as far as bonding the enclosure to the wiring method that I'm using there. 
same thing happens. So again, so important to understand whether or not you're dealing with the voltage class of over 250 volts to ground or 250 volts or less. And also whether or not you have impairments. All those things are critically important. Hopefully you got something out of today's episode. Till next time, stay safe. Do we do code and five? Who wants to do code and five? Five?